Okay, God bless you. My name is Jonathan Kale. Um, I'm going to give you a word of the Lord that uh, that I was supposed to give a while back. I just wasn't being really, uh, I just say obedient or I just didn't make the time. Okay, so I'm being obedient and making the time. Um, I know that delayed obedience is still disobedience. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you all is that the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he was telling me that that I need to warn people to make sure they're being a witness uh, at their work at the workplace um, and he told me in particularly the workplace he didn't even break down you know out there in the street and so like he said the workplace you know um, a lot of times we tend to forget that uh, we're not just at work you know to do whatever the task is at work okay um but we're there not just to only shine a light but to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and not just to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ but to shine a light okay um and this is very uh this is a very stern word amen um and I just want to encourage you all because you know um at jobs you know we're around a lot of familiar spirits there's a lot of uh you know a lot of different religions uh, I work around a lot of Muslims um, you know there's a lot of people who you know they just don't want to hear the gospel and uh, I'm also going to let you know that um, be led by the Spirit of God when you do preach the Word of God and um, the Lord also wanted me to tell you all that when you do give or when you are going to give a word ask God and we see we have to invite God in everything we do okay um, when I exercise I invite God okay um, we have to invite God in everything we do and so with my point being made I just want to say you know before you witness okay say if you're in your prayer closet or when you're you know walking through the doors you know talk to God okay um, mentally verbally whatever and, and uh, express to God that Lord I want you to set this up in order for me to witness uh, I want you to uh, present the situation uh, I want you Lord God to lay down Lord God the um, the path and and and, and, and pre so I can be a, a, a honorable witness in your sight um, you know be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path uh, you know bring forth me the predestined uh, set up you know the situation bring forth you know uh, you know the, the the scenarios um help me to recognize every area that I can present Christ when an area uh, of presenting Christ uh, won't feel forced and I my prayer my personal prayer was Lord allow me to present the gospel in a way that doesn't seem forced when I come to these uh, sinners, okay, and uh, you know, and and he's been doing it, okay, and he wanted me to tell you all to do the same thing, okay. I mean, you know, you can be coming across people who you don't even know, who are backslidden, okay, who mother and father are uh, in the clergy board, pastors, okay, uh, you know, all types of scenarios, people who grew up in the church. You know, people who uh, were asking God for a sign, you just never know, okay? So you have to ask God, thank you, Jesus. You have to ask God uh, to help me be a witness. Uh, Paul always prayed for boldness, amen? Um, Paul also said, you know, um, that it's always to do the work of an evangelist, okay? So um, you might say, well, that's not my gifting. I do not operate in the the uh, office of an evangelist however that doesn't mean that God cannot use you and that doesn't mean God does not want you to get familiar with speaking up about the word of Jesus Christ okay um so you know I rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus real fast and uh you know I just want you guys to know I'm gonna give you a few little scenarios that went forth uh when I first got to this new location, I worked for the same job, but I have a new location. Okay, now when I when I went in, in this new location, 
there's you know this familiar people who I've worked with before but for the most part I haven't worked with these people before so the people from my old location know me okay they know I'm a minister of the gospel they see how hard I've I go okay so you know there's no more you know proving anything to them or professing Jesus to people who don't want Jesus okay you have to just speak the gospel okay there's no you know you can't do more than what the Spirit of God has for you to do and so he moved me on amen and so now I'm in this new uh, location okay at my job and um, uh, I've, 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 I've come to people gently with the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, at least coming to them with my testimony sometimes or uh, m the mere mentioning of Jesus Christ always looking for an opportunity amen uh, and always using wisdom and how to speak and when to speak and what to say and you know just trying to be aware of what the spirit uh, is trying to speak out of me and even asking God to give me the boldness amen so uh, when I first got there on the scene pretty much you know uh, it was a guy who uh, you know he was Muslim okay and um, you know he thought I was Muslim because he seen that form of godliness but uh, you know because Muslims carry the form you know uh, meaning it seems like something's going on that's holy and of God but they don't have power so they they come with that form of godliness but they deny the power meaning you know I'm still human or or you know uh, first of all you don't know the sun so eh, you're done you know what I'm saying but you know if you do know the sun also because it's Christians who have a form of godliness and uh, they have tasted and seen the sun they they've you know uh, recognized his glory and uh, partook of him and so you know but they still deny the power and still are lukewarm or still walking with errors and excuses in their life and um anytime you really deny the power or uh, excuse me anytime you operate out of errors and excuses you're denying the power and so um but uh you know I had to give it to him straight that I'm Christian and um I just listened to him you know because we also have to humble ourselves to listen okay you can't just profess 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 you have to listen shut your mouth up and listen real quick because God can use you to do more if you just chill okay and so um you know I listened to him and then present situate over times past situations presented itself and um you know I, I began to minister to him um and uh of course he's still Muslim but um you know he even came to a point one of uh, this past week this week actually he almost said that Jesus was Lord, you know what I'm saying? He almost said it out of his mouth. However, you know, you can't say that Jesus is Lord with a sincere conscience because uh, you're not converted, okay? You know, that your heart isn't even uh, open for the Spirit of God. But he almost came to that point because he likes to quote scripture in, in, in a non combative way, but in, a, in agreement with me. And so, you know, this is just showing that when you speak the Word of God, that it's living and that is affecting people okay and um, he almost he almost professed Jesus to be Lord but he couldn't I watched his words he like he almost uttered it out of his mouth and he had trouble and I was just watching him like wow he's showing me how true the scriptures are because he couldn't sincerely with a sincere conscience say that Jesus is Lord but it, he was speaking of uh, Jesus uh, without saying his name and <laughs> you know he just couldn't do it <laughs> but um anyway I bless God because that was revelation and um because I just want to say real quick that you can you can say Jesus is Lord and be a sinner but however uh you're not convinced and he he was almost about to say it in a way where you know he could have been convinced but you know he held back proving that he wasn't convinced so you can talk the game but are you convinced are you uh persuaded okay so you know but anyway, I just want to move on and just say, uh, you know, I was being a witness to him and continuously profess the word of God and just, you know, preach the gospel. Also, uh, one day I was, um, you know, just rejoicing the Lord and singing. And there's a lot of different, there's a lot of space in this area so I get to sing and, you know, and I'm not really necessarily disturbing people and I'm off in a cut by myself. And um, there was a Spanish lady and she um, she bent down near me into one of the bottom uh cabinets and the Holy Spirit said ask her does she know Jesus and I said um, excuse me and I and I haven't really spoken to her uh, I didn't know that she worked at this location longer than me but she just popped up out of the blue 
And so, you know, I was like, well, you know, here's another situation that is presenting itself. I've talked to different people about Jesus. However, I still didn't talk to everybody. But uh, I, I was obedient to the Spirit of God, and I heard him say, ask her, does she know Jesus? He said, ask her, does she know me? And so I said, excuse me. I said, do you know Jesus? And she said, I'm a pastor. Okay. And um, I was like, wow. Okay, praise God. Uh, okay, and her husband's the senior pastor, and she's a pastor of the church along with her husband. And they're pastors over their congregation that the Lord has bestowed upon them. And I was just glorifying God. And now we have a connection. And uh, now we're witnessing to people together. And there's power in numbers. And, you know, um, two is better than one. Amen. And so, you know, God always called people out in twos. Okay. Paul and Silas. Uh, David and Jonathan. Okay. You know. So, you know, we need to uh, make sure that um, we speak up. Because you can be amongst another person who's Christian. And, you know, um, she couldn't speak very good English. And now God is using me and her as a witness with each other because the people who she wanted to reach and still says things she tries to like get me to like say it in a more understandable way and we kind of help each other as we witness to people together and I just bless the name of God man I just want you guys to be encouraged about this because the Lord wants you to be a witness where you work amen because uh Daniel he was you know in Babylon under the rule of the king okay uh ne Nehemiah was the cup Bearer, a uh, drinker, you know, he, he he drank the cup for the uh, king of Persia. Uh, what was that? Who was it? What king was that? Uh, I have to look at it again. But anyway, you know, and, and, and he was a witness, okay? You have to be a witness, amen? Um, I don't like saying stuff and not going to the scripture, having uh, the full, because I know people out there need to know, amen? So let me just say it real quick. Uh, hold on, y'all. The king Yeah, okay, I, I was gonna say it too, King of Xerxes. But I was thinking about um I was thinking about Esther and stuff like that. But this is King of Xerxes as well. Okay, so Nehemiah, you know, and uh and then also, you know, Joseph uh was the rule excuse me, the governor of Egypt and he was a witness, okay. Uh Daniel was uh in Babylon he was okay he was with the magistrates he was a high man of God and they honored him uh you know they honored uh, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego because of their witness okay and so you know we're in a lot of pagan areas like I said these people even scan their right hand okay you understand these people are scanning their right hand to clock in I said it once and I'm gonna say it again they go going shh to right scan in the clock to go, you know, clock in. I don't do it. I do it on phone, okay? I clock in. I put my little, you know, number in there and I clock in. I ain't going for it. I ain't going for nothing, okay? In the name of Jesus, you know? And, uh, you know, this is uh, just being a witness, okay? And people are noticing these things. People are like, why are you clock in? Like, well, who do you think you are? You know, and I get the witness, you know? Because it's situation. You just, you just opened up a door, okay? And then, you know, they're like, wow, is it really all that serious? And then I get a, I give a chance to be a witness, okay? And tell you about the shadow of the things to come. Okay, because this is a very serious time we're in, and uh, you know, and then next thing you know, I saw that what we, me and the sister, the the the, uh, the Spanish sister, we were talking, and next thing you know, um, you know, we were talking about the visions and dreams that I have, and how DC is going to have a powerful earthquake, uh, more intense than the one from before, and everybody was gathering around listening, and uh, it was, it was a, a, a lady. Uh, she was like, what y'all talking about? You know, because we play and talk and stuff like that. And she, you know, she's funny and stuff like that. Cool sister. And uh, come to find out, she was like, you know, she really wanted to know what we was talking about. And so I started explaining to her, you know, I'm telling my uh, dreams and visions. And she's like, oh, wow, so what, you a prophet? You know? And I was like, you know, just listening and stuff. Like, because I just didn't answer or whatever. I, you know, she was like, well, why? She said, well, why don't you prophesy if you're a prophet? Because I didn't even say I was. She was like, what, you a prophet? Prophesy. Prophesy. And you just can't prophesy. If that was the case. I'll be just doing, saying stuff to y'all every day, you know, on my own. That's divination if you're doing it on your own. People are doing that out here, y'all. Quick word, just to let you know. People are speaking stuff on YouTube. That's why they got words every day. I'm not saying that God don't do that, but I'm just saying sometimes, you know, God ain't saying nothing, and you still are. And, uh, but anyway, I just want to say, you know, long story short, basically, uh, man, you know, she just started professing how, you know, she once had tongues. 
okay and this is a real flirtatious woman okay this is a woman who you probably throw your nose up at if you're a Christian okay she's always you know flirting and kinda acting kinda nasty you know and you know stuff like that and kirking out and getting angry with people and talking slick and stuff like that whole time okay she's uh, an adulterer uh, but she's a backslider who Jesus is married to okay she's an adulteress but you know she's still a backslider who Jesus is married to however he didn't maybe yet divorce her but uh, that certificate of divorce can be on its way depending on how long you know you stay in your state and do not come back to Jesus so anyway you know I've just been encouraging her amen and um, preaching the word of God to her and just edifying her and stuff like that and um, I mean this sister started crying you know what I'm saying so you know I just want you to know you know, she just started crying to me how she used to have tongues, okay? And, you know, how she had the Holy Ghost and all this. And, man, you know, these are the same people who you would never imagine, okay? So I just bless the name of the Lord, and uh, I thank God that I'm actually being obedient right now and giving you this word. And I hope it blesses one of you all, man, in the name of Jesus, for real. Because, um, you know, I just, you know, we just can't be jelly back. And um, I can tell you right now that I felt that spirit of fear try to come on me and compromise but uh, -uh we got to rebuke it. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I just want to tell you right now, 2 Timothy, I want to give you a few scriptures. 2 Timothy, okay, if you want to turn your scriptures to 2 Timothy, tell your neighbor to turn their scripture to 2 Timothy, amen, 4, 2 through 5. Well, let's go there. It says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convict, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth, and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. You can only evangelize truthfully to sinners okay a while back um jesus christ uh i heard the spirit of god in prayer and this is one of the first words that i've ever heard in an audible manner uh from jesus christ uh at least it felt audible okay but um these are these this is what he told me he said admonish the sinner with agape love that's what he told me so we're to witness to sinners okay he told me admonish the sinner with agape love okay and so, you know, that was real, and it was very real to me when he told me that, because I never read that before, and I didn't know what admonished meant. I didn't have a strong vocabulary, so, you know, I bless God, because he'll also make give you a strong vocabulary, because when he speaks to you in prayer, he'll tell you things that you've never heard or read, or, you know, you just, you, did, you didn't know what that word meant until he told you, you know, so, um... Uh, let's go to uh, Jude 1 3 it says uh, right here Jude 1 verses 3 it says beloved while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints Okay, so we are to contend earnestly for the faith. We are to speak the word of God. And we are all entrusted as priests, as ambassadors, who are the mouthpiece of God every time we speak. Okay, so uh, we have to make sure that our language is pure and our language is edifying. And, you know, it's just something that God desires to see out of us being a light so we can give glory to the Father. Okay, so let's go to Matthew 5:13, Amen. And it reads, Matthew 5:13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is the good, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do the do nor do they light nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, 
but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. So that's really all self-explanatory. Amen. I thank God for the word. Let's go to Matthew 7, 9. Amen. Uh, here we go. Matthew 7, 9, it says, um, is that 7, 9? Oh, excuse me, 7, 19. Turn to Matthew 7, 19. It says, uh, I'm going to start at 16, okay? It says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Uh, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Amen. And biblically also fruit is representative of doctrine and it represents uh, the fruit that you're bearing. What are you producing? Amen. And so what are you producing in the sight of man? Amen. Are you producing wrath? Are you producing righteousness? Okay, so that's also something that needs to be shown. Uh, are you spreading the gospel? Okay, if you're not spreading the gospel, you are worthless and you will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You are, you are good for nothing and you, are, you will wither away. Okay, you are not producing uh, any value. Amen. If you're not spreading the message of Jesus Christ verbally. Amen. You're not of any value after you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and stay amongst people in the workplace who are on their way to eternal hellfire. God bless you.